Breaking news this evening. There's been a major incident at Manchester Arena. Emergency services say they're responding to reports of an explosion during the Ariana Grande gig. For a moment, my heart just stopped and, you know, time kind of stood still because it didn't really sink in what had happened. On the morning of May the 22nd, 2017, thousands of fans were waking up to what was supposed to be the best day of their lives. Fans were going crazy online via social media sites, Twitter and Facebook, sharing their excitement about the night ahead. No one knew just what the night had in store. The nation went into panic and a town was left in pieces. 22 killed and over 60 seriously injured. This is the story of what really happened that one fateful night. What life was like after the attack and how one city came together to help comfort the victims and show the world that we are united. This is One Love. So when the Ariana Grande tickets went on sale, um, me and my friend Sophie got up super early to make sure we obviously got the tickets. Um, as soon as we booked the tickets, we thought we'd make a night of it and we booked a hotel as well, not too far away from the actual arena. So when I got into Manchester though, it was just like a whirlwind of excitement. We checked into our hotel room, got McDonald's and you know, was, was getting ready and it was super exciting. We had songs on in the background and we both looked really, really good, I'm not gonna lie. And then we jumped in a taxi to the arena and um, when we got there, you know, queuing up outside, like this is my first ever concert, so I didn't know what to expect or what it was gonna look like. So walking into that arena, it felt a little bit euphoric because obviously, like I said, I've never been to a, a concert before. And then we watched the opening acts come on and then when the lights dimmed, like, everyone was going crazy. Like, everyone was screaming her name. She had this, like, um, video on in the background that was counting down from 10 minutes. Everyone was going absolutely crazy. And then when she came out, like, this just rush of excitement hit everyone. Everyone was on their feet, singing along. You just saw this, like, wall of like bright lights and you could just see that everyone was like so happy to be there like like there was no worries like it, it was just so it was one of hands down one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my entire life So when the lights finally went down and she went off stage, um, Sophie knew that we had to get out of there uh, fairly quickly because there was a lot of people in the arena. So we made our way down the stairs and as we were walking out of the building, we just heard something in the background and automatically you're not gonna think what it is. So we went outside and the way we came out of the arena, we didn't really know about where we were because it was very dark out. Um, both of our phones had died or was on very low percentage so we couldn't really check anything without them dying um, and then you just saw this wave of people running towards you and I just assumed that it was just for the tour van or Ariana had come out to meet fans after the show like obviously like you're not gonna assume anything else and then when you see people running and they're actually screaming and crying and you see blood it's very different.
So I rang Nathan in an absolute mad panic, saw the news footage and it was just absolutely catastrophic, like I can't even explain to you how panicked I felt seeing, you know, the starts of this this news of news coming through to Sky News and the information coming through, it was just absolutely horrific. And then when we got to Piccadilly Gardens, it was about five minutes away from where we was, where our hotel was. And I got a phone call off my friend Claudia. The first word she said to me, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? Why, why wouldn't I be? And then she told me what had gone on. And I think for a moment, my heart just stopped and, you know, time kind of stood still because it didn't really sink in what had happened. So after I finished on the phone, we headed straight down to our hotel, which is on Oxford Road. And uh, we got in and switched on the news. And that's when it finally hit that we'd just been in the middle of a terrorist attack. And I've never seen Sophie so quiet or so, you know, she's a very, she's got a huge personality and you know she, she likes to voice her opinions and to see Sophie sat so quiet and you know in the corner she was tucked up in the blankets on the bed um, and I think this had honestly and me as well I think it honestly changed both of our lives forever. So the first thing I did is I plugged my phone in and I rang my mum who fortunately had not seen the news so there was no time for her to actually panic which I'm so thankful for because I honestly if I would have heard the news like that I don't know how I would how I would have you know took it um so I rang my mom to let her know that I was okay I was safe that um me and Sophie were obviously in the hotel room nothing had happened um but the worst thing that happened was when I rang my nan I called her after I hung up with my mum and I was the first thing I said to her is Nan, I don't want you to panic. And she had obviously just woken up, like it was very late, she was obviously in bed already. I was like, I don't want you to panic, but something's happened at Manchester Arena. And I could just hear her start crying in the background and I was like, No, 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 no. Like I am honestly fine, like me and Sophie are fine and she was like, I just want to make sure you're okay and my heart honestly broke at that point. And that's when the floods of messages started coming in. I had people that I've not spoken to for years messaging me, asking me if I'm okay. Um, people that I don't really know messaging me, asking me if I was okay. So I thought the best course of action would be to post something on Facebook, just a status saying that me and Sophie were okay, because a lot of people knew that we were there. And also a lot of people didn't know we were there. So I just wanted to get the information out there fast. So like the days after the attack, obviously, um, you can't just stay inside. I have to go back to normal life. So I was in work the following Saturday and when I went in, everyone was asking me like how I was. And honestly, like, I've, said, I've said it once and I'll say it again, that the victims of the attack, I would rather have taken a place than one of those children that were at the attack, um, 100%. Um, because honestly, like, their children. Like, I'm basically an adult. Um, I think it's been six, seven months down the line. I think it's definitely, it's de definitely affects affects me every day. I thank my lucky stars. I'm still here. Like, it could have, I could be, I could have been one of the 22 um, that unfortunately lost their lives at the concert. Um, and yeah, I do want to take like, every opportunity I get now, and I just see life as more than something that I did before it happened.